思います。<笑>うまい。ごめんなさい。<笑> My name is Marcelo Ryan Lebo. I'm I'm was in the Army Air Corps in World War II, stationed mostly in Liège, Belgium, during the Battle of the Bulge. And I'm a member of the Cheyenne River Sioux Tribe of the Two Kettle Band. Thank you. Hello, everybody. My name is Troy Wan. I'm a United States Air Force veteran, and I'm from the Rosebud Sioux Tribe in South Dakota. I'm incredibly uh, proud to have the opportunity to introduce to you today、um, a woman who is a strong voice for our Native nations, coming live from New Hampshire, Tulsi Gabbards. Thank you so much. It is truly a privilege and honor to be introduced by two veterans serving from different generations who reflect. The many generations of warriors and heroes who have served in our nation's military from across Indian country. There is such a strong tradition of service and duty and honor that we've seen reflected. I'm grateful to have served alongside some of them.、Uh, I'm Congresswoman Tulsi Gabbard. I come from Hawaii, and I'm grateful to be able to to just be a, a part of this conversation with you. About how we, as as a nation,、uh, do better for the indigenous people in our country, from people across Indian country. Growing up in Hawaii, I think I've got a unique perspective. While I'm not native Hawaiian,、uh, my roots are across Polynesia. But growing up in Hawaii,、um, there is a deep appreciation of native Hawaiian culture. And understanding the value and the wisdom that has been passed down from generation to generation across Native Hawaiian culture, that we all benefit from today, that we benefited from growing up in Hawaii, and I think this is something so critical as we all head towards this very important election, is to recognize the wrongs of the past, and therefore forge a new path forward for the United States of America. Where we can recognize、uh, how we must move forward together, and to respect the decisions that have been made, respect the indigenous people across Indian country who, for too long, have、uh, not only lacked that respect but have seen agreements and treaties violated.、Uh, I had the great privilege and、uh, good fortune of answering the call to duty at Standing Rock. Along with thousands of veterans across the country who converged there in Standing Rock in November of 2016,、uh, in a call, a call to duty, a call to protect the indigenous rights of the people there and to protect water. And I'll never forget that first night we landed in Bismarck, North Dakota. My husband and I was the middle of winter. There was a big blizzard moving in, and that tiny little airport was packed shoulder to shoulder with veterans who served in many different wars and conflicts. Veterans of all different ages, coming from all different parts of the country, different political parties, different、uh, ideologies, but standing together once again, just as we have in uniform with that. Mission to serve and to protect, and I spoke with a few of those veterans who said, who shared with me that this call to serve was the first time that they felt a sense of purpose in their lives since they had worn the uniform, and they were grateful to be there. I think it's this kind of unity. This kind of common mission to serve, to protect, to preserve what is so special. About this country, our resources, and those who were here before anyone else, our nation's first people, is what we must rally around as we look to work side by side to usher in a bright future with fresh leadership, new leadership for our country, where we can actually come together and solve the many challenges, the many problems that we face.、Uh, this motivation. To serve, to be of service to God, is is what drives me. It's my driving motivation in my life, and therefore, to be of service to others is、um, 
is, is what motivates me on a daily basis and what keeps me centered and focused and all the craziness of Washington. And this common purpose of service is what gives me hope. It gives me hope that even in as challenging and trying as the times are that we're facing, that together we can and we must be the change that we want to see for us in this country and in the world. Thank you again for allowing me to join you here for this conversation. Uh, thank you. And also what I want uh, our, our tribal nations to know is uh, Congresswoman Gabbard is actually still in active armed services. She serves as a major in the uh, Hawaiian National Guard, and she is also uh, an, uh, served in Iraq. So thank you again for your service. And we discussed uh, a little bit about Thank you. Um, uh, uh, questions as far as Native Americans and if you became the president, uh, what issues uh, or as far as the treaties and sovereignties, what would be your stance on that? Oh, well, first of all, to say that I would make it a priority to respect the agreements and the treaties and the trust, the responsibility that the federal government of the United States has is essential. I think that's an essential first step, but that is literally just the first step to go through the many different things that, that uh, are, are there, both with challenges that must be addressed, but also opportunities that we must invest in uh, is what I look forward to being able to do uh, if I have the privilege of serving as your president. Uh, you know, it's it's important that Washington, which is such a bubble disconnected with the reality of the lives that are being lived across this country today, um, go away. I think this is the biggest uh, divide that we've got to overcome so that throughout the federal government, uh, including at the BIA, that we have leaders who are actually listening, listening, going out, not sitting behind a desk in Washington, but actually going out into different communities, uh, per, conducting listening sessions, bringing in tribal leaders to the conversations to be able to really understand the local, state, and national issues that exist and to provide that leadership there that is inclusive to really bring about uh, solutions, to resolve or mediate differences that may exist between the state and the federal government to ultimately accomplish that objective of respecting the treaties that have been agreed to and the, the federal trust, that responsibility that we have to Indian country. I think as we go beyond that, and I listened to some of the insights that were shared uh, just a few minutes ago, and I think there, that kind of listening is critical to understand, as, as it sounded like a young woman shared, to actually learn and understand who you are and not just look to what other people have written about you that is so wildly inaccurate to actually be there and to listen, to listen, to have that understanding and understand how even for those of us who uh, are not a part of your community, how we as a nation can benefit greatly from the wisdom, the cultural practices and traditions that are passed uh, down from generation to generation, whether we're talking about agriculture or many other uh, conflict resolution, many other things. Again, this is something I've really appreciated being able to grow up in Hawaii and, and get the benefit of our kupuna, uh, our elders in Hawaii uh, has been a, a, an immeasurable gift. Uh, the preservation of language and culture. Uh, this is something that I've literally seen and witnessed growing up through my life where when I was a child, uh, Native Hawaiian immersion language immersion schools didn't exist. But over time, we've seen how uh, the support has grown to the point where we're seeing Native Hawaiian immersion schools where children are not learning English until the fourth grade. So they're learning Native Hawaiian as their first language. Uh, of course, with the support of their teachers, their parents have to be invested in this and learn Native Hawaiian themselves. And then who are going on and graduating from the University of Hawaii, uh, specializing in and focused in, in Native Hawaiian language. Uh, we're seeing now our first PhDs graduating. And so it was great to hear that UNLV is starting in this way, but this is the kind of thing that I believe that our leadership in this country needs to invest in. 
to recognize that this is the call for the need within tribal communities and we must support that preserve native language and culture uh, voting rights is something that we've seen have been infringed upon in this last election people actually trying to stop those across different reservations in indian country from actually going and voting trying to make it so that your voices are not heard that is absolutely unacceptable really seriously taking action to address the reality of of how many missing and and murdered uh women there are native women across this country whose voices uh, are no longer heard, uh, whose, whose uh, kidnappings or whose deaths are no one is paying attention to. If this happened anywhere else, the whole country would be in an uproar. The fact that there is not a collection of this information and a concerted effort to try to prevent more of this unfortunate pain and loss and hardship must change. Water rights, easement rights, respecting religious freedom and religious sites. These are all things that should come naturally to us as leaders in this country, recognizing the history, the wrongdoings of the past and how we together must correct our course for the future. I know there are many other issues that must be addressed. I think that we can and must find solutions to these challenges and that can only happen when leaders from across Indian country representing these indigenous communities have a seat at the table with the federal government in Washington, where you are no longer just an afterthought, but you are there representing the voices of your people and making sure the decisions that are made are ones that best serve you. Well, again, thank you, Congresswoman. Uh, Gabbard, one of the things I really want, I, I'm so glad you made it today because I know that in Sioux City you were deployed uh, out of country, so I really appreciate you taking your time today. And can we give her a round of applause, please? Thank you so much. Thank you for letting me be a part of this. And good luck. Thank you.